Hello! I've got a slight problem here. <laughs> Around the time I drew that coloured pencil lion, my hand started to hurt because it was quite a labour intensive process and it is still hurting quite a few days later so I've done something in here around the thumb area like on here when I do that it's really quite painful just going down through the hand and I just need to rest this because I think if I keep continuing doing what I'm doing it's going to get worse you can see I've got a handkerchief sticking out of here because this part was chafing my hand and last night when I took it off I had this huge red mark around there so I've got a hanky for softness <laughs> Oh, it's so annoying. I got this lovely hand brace from the pharmacy. The pharmacist was really great. I went in and told her what I was experiencing and she picked this up immediately, put it straight on me and it's really nice and supportive. It's got a hard piece of plastic here which is keeping my hand from bending because I'm also getting pain across the wrist. I don't know if it's RSI, repetitive strain injury, or if I've just managed to tear a tendon or a ligament or something. So I called the doctor. He said to wear this for a week and let it rest. What a pain. I do everything with my right hand. I'm so completely right hand dominant. My left hand is essentially useless for any fine motor skills. So I can't do art properly with this hand and I had been resting it for a few days thankfully I've had a couple of videos which I was able to upload and you will have seen two videos previous to this while I'm actually in the brace but I am thinking that in a week's time I have another video that needs to come out and I've got nothing <laughs> I've got nothing recorded whatsoever so all of my plans have kind of gone out the window for what I was going to film next and I think I'm just going to have to make something up on the spot and so today I'm going to do some art with my non-dominant left hand it's probably going to be a total disaster but I'm really curious to see if I can actually create something with this less than useful hand <laughs> so that's my video today yay so let's get into it and fingers crossed it's not a total mess <laughs> probably will be <laughs> Well, I found some bits and pieces. This Winsor & Newton watercolour journal, which I've had for a few years, and I used this when I was going to a little still life class a few years ago before the pandemic went down. But I've got some pages that I've done in here. I kind of like that one. So I'm thinking maybe something a little more abstract like this would be good. A few pages left in here that I haven't yet used. So I think I'll just finish up this book with some of my experiments today. I also have this Bristol visual journal. I haven't done very much in it but the bindings all come apart so it's just a bit broken. So the paper's still fine though and I think this will be fine for trying out with my left hand as well. So um, I've got a pen test page here. I think I've actually pulled some pages out of here in the past but I was just doing practicing with a pen and that is essentially all I have in here so I've got quite a lot of unused paper that I can practice on. Let's get into it! I figured crayons would be the easiest thing to start with and I'm drawing in my Winsor & Newton watercolour journal here. In time lapse it actually looks a lot more effortless than what it really was. It was so hard. My level of precision with my non-dominant hand is not good at all. I figured I would start off with some really basic looking flowers. These are just imagination ones and drawing little flowers like this is one of my go-to things when I'm not sure what to draw. So I figured this would be easiest and they turned out pretty well actually. It was hard to be precise with the crayons but I didn't do too badly. The problem started when I tried to reactivate the crayons with water. My precision with the brush is terrible on this because I'd forgotten that with anything water soluble like these Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 crayons, you have to scrub the paper a bit to really get all of the crayon to dissolve and I just could not do this very neatly. But I did manage to improve on the second flower and this one looks a lot better than the first. It does feel so unnatural holding the brush in my left hand though because it's just completely the wrong angle for me. 
but I found it was a little easier to rest most of my wrist on the paper so I had a little more control and that's not exactly the greatest thing for ergonomics but it got me through this video. Anyway I decided the crayons were too difficult to re-wet so I pulled out one of my Schmincke watercolour palettes here and it was definitely a lot easier just painting straight onto the paper and not having to worry about reactivating anything or scrubbing the paper. These two flowers were much easier and I was slowly gaining a little more control with that brush just I guess from using it over time and my brain was rewiring to make some new connections. This paper is 100% cotton and that also was a big help along with the professional Schmincke paints because they just work so well together. The flowers on their own just looked really childish so I thought I'd flick some paint on although I kept hitting the brush onto the paper as well. Never mind but once the extra paints landed on the flowers and blended in it looked really cool. I couldn't control the flicking of the paint very well which is why it's gone everywhere all over my desk as well but in some ways that was quite nice to get a more spontaneous effect and here I am in real time signing my name on this. It took so long. This is something I would scroll off in a couple of seconds. You could see how painstakingly slow it was to use my left hand but I am amazed at how well I was able to write my name. I've never been able to write my name before with my left hand. I seem to have really developed over time just through art in general that I'm able to use my left hand a little bit more than I thought I was going to. I'm quite proud of that. It turned out so much better than I thought it was going to be and I even managed to sign my name legibly. I'm so pleased. My left hand's actually working a little bit better than I thought it was going to be and I think flicking those paints across here has just pulled this picture up and made it look somewhat interesting and I'm actually quite enjoying the liveliness of it. I like how the paints have flicked onto the wet parts of the flowers. If I'd have known that I could have done that with all the flowers just using the Schmincke paints. I think definitely the watercolour paints are a lot easier to use with the brush rather than reactivating the Neo Color 2 crayons. But I like the colors, I'm happy with how it's turned out and it makes me feel like I can try another artwork as well. I decided to go for something a little more abstract and I am using my right hand a little bit here just to hold the tape so I can cut it. I also don't really trust my left hand with scissors very much. I used a thicker washi tape for the frame and a skinny one to make some abstract geometric shapes all across the paper. This is still in the Winsor and Newton watercolour journal. My right hand is doing the job of the left hand and I was even brave enough by the end to use the scissors in my left hand to cut the tape. Just a couple of pieces. It was so difficult though. And now I'm going in with that same Schmincke watercolour palette because it was there. It's that limited edition one I have and I was picking out some of the colours to paint in different shapes. I wasn't really planning this one out too much, I was just painting in colours as I went along. It's a fairly limited palette but I did add a few more extra colours than I was first anticipating just because I felt like it. <laughs> this one was a bit easier for my left hand because I've got the tape there that catches any of my mistakes and I can paint onto that rather than going over lines and I was going for more of a flat wash technique rather than trying to blend too many colours in together. Keep it simple was the idea of this video because I just didn't want to make it too difficult for myself. I did want to end up with something half decent and I knew if I was too ambitious it would be frustrating and I'd get upset with it. This was a lot of fun. It did take a long time. I mean I've sped this up so it's very hard to tell but I would say using my left hand took me pretty much twice as long as my right hand would which is annoying in itself because I'm an impatient person and I like to work quickly on my art pieces. I hate being slow, it drives me crazy. It's all I could do though, I did my best. And I'm going over the top of everything with a second layer of each colour because Schmincke paints really do work better when they're layered. I was also seeing some streaks from that first layer and glazing over the top with another layer generally tends to remove that. Plus it was just making everything a lot more saturated which is what I wanted. 
So this particular artwork was really relaxing and I've done this with my right hand as well. It's a really great one that I highly recommend to anyone. If you can't think of something to paint, this is just a really fun way to add some colors and the tape does create some really interesting geometric shapes. When I peel it off a bit later, you'll see the cool effect that it makes. So I was thinking it was a little boring like this. I dug out a couple of those pixie powders that I have lying around in my hoard of art supplies. So I scattered the dust on and activated it with water. These pixie powders are glittery and they make this wonderful sheen over the top. They're really strange. I've never used anything else like this product. I also have that black fireworks one, which added some interesting darkness and a few bits of color in there. I think it ended up being a much more interesting piece than just the paint on its own. And then I peeled off all of the tape. It was so satisfying, except I could not remember which order I'd put the tape on. So I just have to pull off one piece and then if it was stuck to another one, peel that bit off too. But I got there eventually. This has turned out quite pretty. I like the sparkly pixie powders. They've made an interesting sheen on there. So I might end up doing something else to this, but I'm going to leave it for now because I'm not too sure what. I might want to stick something on top of it or do some drawings over the top of it, but I think I would prefer to use my right hand for that. So I'm going to leave this one, put it aside for now and maybe come back to this at a later time. I think I might do something in this Bristol visual journal as well just one last piece and I feel like something collagey or just throwing on some paint so let's see what I can come up with on here I have some acrylic paint that's been sitting in my wet painter since I did those clay figurines I am probably going to use up this paint to just slap it on there and then build up some layers from there and see how I go this artwork went on a total tangent of its own and ended up being completely different to what I'd first thought. I was thinking of doing some kind of ocean painting, but once the green went on, I realized that it wasn't going to be what I thought it was. Eventually, I actually put some paper underneath this artwork so that I wasn't painting on papers underneath, but it took me a while to remember that. The black just didn't work, but I ended up lifting off all the paint from the wet palette, and then I grabbed some paint tubes which were the same colors and just blobbed the paint straight on so I didn't have to worry about faffing about more with the wet palette. And I went over all of that black with some different colored blues, added in some green. I was having to unscrew the lids with my left hand and that took a long time as well. Uh, everything is just so frustratingly difficult. But I was starting to like it a lot better at this point when I'd got the blues and the greens on together. Now it wasn't really meant to be anything, it was just a background. I tried to cut out some butterflies with my left hand, it wasn't going to happen. So I had to use my right hand to cut a few of these little papers out. I ended up only cutting two of the pictures out because of that reason. Then I dug out some butterfly stencils and used some silver liquid pearls to try and make a stencil, but it didn't work at all. So I ended up just going over everything with a silver outline. The butterfly kind of came out. This one is a gold liquid pearls. The stencil thing did not work at all. It looked like a stupid, horrible blob. So I ended up just drawing drawing a butterfly on here. It looks like a child's drawing. It's hilarious. At this point I knew I was going to have to cover all of this and turn it into one of those collage pieces, but I thought I would add in some more of the metallics onto the background just to make it a little more interesting. I tried to paint in some butterflies, but with a bottle this was even more difficult than a paintbrush. But the great thing with a collage mixed media piece like this is you can just keep layering until you're happy with it and cover up any mistakes you make. I used some PVA glue to stick down those two butterflies. If I had my right hand working at full capacity, I would have cut those out properly. And then I used some stickers out of my sticker book. Woohoo! The Bees, Birds and Butterflies book is no longer pristine, so I don't mind pulling other stickers out of it now. And then I found these little wooden letters. I did not have quite enough to spell out what I needed, so I improvised with a few other letters to make ones that I was missing. But of course I ran out completely of anything to make another E, so I had to draw one in with the little liquid pearls bottle. I decided that my phrase on here would be never give up. 
although in hindsight adapt and overcome would also be a good one to use because I could have spent the last week or two in a quagmire of depression not doing anything because my hand is sore but I thought I would try and do something positive. I really missed making art and I just needed to make something. It didn't matter if it was a total mess. I just needed to create and I'm so glad I did this. It wasn't easy but I had a lot more fun than I thought I was going to and it wasn't as hard as I expected. I mean I think this turned out really well. I'm covering everything just with a thick layer of Mod Podge because the stickers weren't sticking very well to the acrylic paint and the Mod Podge just decoupages everything down. I had two more little butterflies in my stash and I stuck these on at the very last minute. My mum sent me these years ago and I finally used them. Okay, this thing is taking forever to dry. You can see all of that glue just in the middle there and under the butterflies, especially there. So I'm going to have to let this one sit overnight. To, but I'm just going to call it quits for now so I can finish this whole video. So here are the artworks I managed to achieve using my left hand and not my right. I've got this lovely floral piece. This strange geometric galaxy piece, which I actually really like. I think the emerald bits are so pretty. So I got those two pieces in my watercolor book. And then I made this completely random mixed media piece using a whole bunch of stuff in my stash. So I'm really happy. I finally used these two butterflies. I've had those for years and I've never known what to do with them. So now they're on a piece of paper. I might actually end up putting this whole paper onto a thicker board so that it's not just all bent but it does need to lie down under something for a day or so just to fully dry. I'm really happy with the colors and I figure never give up is a great message to have for this video because yes I am really struggling having my hand in this brace but that doesn't mean I can't create something. It's not what I normally would have created but in some ways that's a great thing because now I've made something that I never would have thought of probably when I had my right hand and I have to hang this up somewhere I think once I've mounted it onto board. So I guess what I've learned from making this video is yes I can use my left hand although my art is going to be quite a bit different but I think I still managed to capture my usual sort of style regardless of not being able to do some more finer details that I would normally do with my right hand. Although my left hand is pretty tired so I do need to rest this one as well and I am thankful I was able to make something for this video. It's been a few days since I first started the video, I took the weekend off and my hand is actually feeling quite a lot better so I think within a week or so it's going to be able to be used again. Thank the Lord because I really want my right hand back and I am just going to take it easy so I will be skipping my midweek video this coming week but I will be back hopefully in a week from now with another video using my right hand to do something. I will be taking it easy, I will be doing art with products that are easier to use with my hand rather than doing anything too labour intensive for the near future. Thank you so much for watching this video, it's been a little bit of a trauma but I have had fun and it has been a very interesting if somewhat forced experiment to see what I could do with my non-dominant hand. Turns out I'm not too bad in the end. Anyway I hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button for more videos. I will be coming back as soon as I can to make another video. I hope you're all having a fantastic day out there and rest your hands if they're hurting because these things are so important. Swatch you later. Bye!